Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 240 of the Generation Xbox podcast. There, nailed it. Uh, I'm Steven. <laughs> and I'm Tyler. Thanks for joining us. We're your home for all things Xbox. Uh, if you didn't figure that out from the title, check out GenerationXbox.com for all the latest Xbox news, reviews, gaming, uh, opinions, and more. Check out GenerationXbox.com. And um, as 2021 begins, finally, um, everything changed, right? Once 2021 hit? Yeah, uh, well, that's uh, what I, I said when, when the clock stroke 2021. Um, in yeah. My, out in the street, uh, throwing, mm. throwing little poppers on the ground. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, it, except not much changed. Um, but we're looking forward to uh, 2021 now rather than looking back at 2020. And one of the things that we're hopeful for this year is uh, that shows like E3 and... Um, other gaming shows will be back this year and hopefully in a form where we can all go there and, and be together and cover the event to do that. We need your help. So we'd really like you, uh, if, if you're in a position to do it and you enjoy the content we make, which is this show, our website, generationxbox.com. We are going to be starting doing some Twitch content here this week. We've got it all set up. It's just right. You know, just getting it ready to go. We've got some plans for YouTube as well. that We'll be rolling out. If you enjoy that stuff, you know, and, and you want us to be able to go to E3 like we did in 2019 and gave a lot of coverage there. Head on over to patreon.com slash generation Xbox and support us there for as little as two dollars a month. It goes such a long way. Um, and I'll say in advance, you know, we appreciate it more than you know if you're able to do it for as little, like I said, as little as two dollars a month, you can make a huge difference in, in making us uh, be able to, to do those things and helping us be able to do them. So anyway. Steven, uh, how are you? Not bad, not bad. Uh, turn of the year obviously happened. Um, you know, getting ready to take on the the new year, have some stuff lined up for my, my career-wise, uh, getting getting all that stuff figured out. But other than that, uh, you know, good, playing some games. Immortals Phoenix Rising has my time. I love it. It's a lot like Breath of the Wild, but I think I like some of it better. Uh, for instance, weapons don't break. I just, it's one of those games where yeah. you're like, let's do one more thing. You know, I see a, mm -hmm. a chest or a piece of like ambrosia and I want to go get it. And then all of a sudden I do one more thing. And next thing I know, four hours have gone by. Um, I don't think I've played that game in, in time spans less than like four hour chunks. I think mm -hmm. I have like 12 hours in that game. And I think it's basically three, four hour chunks done, uh, which is yeah. funny. And, you know, not a lot of games I, I do that with, but I, I'm absolutely loving it. it I it was on sale in the countdown that sale probably ended on Tuesday, to be honest with you. And I, sh I guess I should know this off the top of my head, but I don't, um, but if it's still on sale for 40 bucks, I do recommend picking it up. If you're interested, very fun game. Um, mm -hmm. but that's been, you know, basically my week. And of course, playing chill with you, Tyler, uh, yeah. carrying you on my back, you know, sure. back hurts a little bit, but besides yeah. chill, uh, and, and me giving you a bunch of assists, cause you've been mm -hmm. scoring all the goals. I, I gotta admit, uh, mm -hmm. how have you been? Good. I've, you know, it's back to work this week. The the fun of, you know, two straight three day weeks is over. Um, so I, I had two. Well, I didn't have four day weekends. I had two two day one day out of each one was work from home. Sure. So, but uh, but I got to chill at home for four days each week, and that was really fun. Um, but that's over. It's back to work, and you know, it's okay. It's fine. Um, so it, it's weird because it's like you have to get used to waking up early all over again. Yeah, I and, need to unscrew my sleep schedule for yeah <laughs> when that starts. So that's a little weird. I didn't think it would be that big of an adjustment after just that shorter period of time of doing it, but it is. So that's been fun. Um, yeah, it's been it's been good. I've uh, been trying to get caught up on movies, not like you do. Like you watch movies at like a clip that you know puts me to shame. But when I get to watch movies, I watch like three or four. And you think that's crazy. So Yeah, I, I can't really watch a bunch of movies in a row, but I do like watching like about mm -hmm. a movie a, a mm -hmm. not a day, but it on the weekends, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm usually a two movie a day on the weekends, but what sometimes so, I like throwing the midweek movie in. Yeah. So I've watched a couple of movies like for that I haven't seen for a long time. And like stuff that I just really, really enjoy and I was reminded of how much I like it. So one was Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, just an awesome movie. Okay. Um, I haven't seen that movie in forever. I watched Face the Music, 
you know, when that hit digital. How is that? But it's good. I, I think it's a good fitting way. It, the the coolest thing about it is you can really tell that these guys just love playing these characters. Like it's just they just love it. Yeah. So that part really comes through and and goes a long way um, for it. So, and then the other one is uh, Hot Fuzz. If you've ever seen that, I have. I just watched that over the uh, mm-hmm. the quarantine period. Yep. So I watched that in a like cheapy theater, like the the second run theater. Okay. Back in two thousand and seven, I think it would have been. Um, and man, I laughed so hard watching that stupid movie but it, it holds up and it's still really funny i i think it's better than shot of the dead i think it's the best of the three well i haven't seen I that world's end so i can't well, say that but i, think I don't it's think world's than... end is all that great that's what i've heard yeah it's i think hot fuzz is the vastly superior of the three did you ever see paul i know it's I, not... I did and i liked it jason bateman's fantastic yeah paul is <laughs> great so, and i know it's not you know, in that three but they are in that you know, movie and so so what's is it the is it a different director is that what's different is that why it's not connected somehow some way yeah and one of them Um, is the alien i can't remember who plays the alien is jason bateman the alien i can't remember no he's the like fbi dude then i think whatever i think uh simon Pegg is the alien yeah i don't uh, i don't i don't know i I have it i gotta watch it again um anyways sorry so yeah video games yeah well i did watch tenet though and for i think okay. it's on it was on sale over the weekend if you have game pass uh like 25 percent off and i wish i would have waited because i could have just bought it then but i bought it right when it came out and didn't watch it it is great i do not understand some of it and i i really don't want to look up things about it because i want to watch the movie again and see if having yeah. knowing some parts of the ending will help connect some of the dots but it is really fun i, I very I much had to, it. i had to do that with inception watch it a second time and then some other stuff became a little more clear. Yeah. I, I so I need to we bought the four K collection, the Christopher Nolan four K, both yeah. myself and you, and I don't think either of us have watched a single movie from it. No, I, I so. took the Dark Knight out. Like I had it physically the disc out of the box. Yeah. But I, I've never watched um anything out of it. I don't regret buying it though. Weird no, as that I'll sounds. watch it I'll watch it eventually. Yeah. Um and so. probably soon before i have to go back to the other you know. the other box that i super want like sooner than later is a tarantino 4k um do they make that it's not it's not available yet so very hopeful that we'll see that eventually sure. um so yeah i'm but yeah movies fun uh it's winter so it's a good time to go and get through some of that stuff i did watch dr sleep which if you're a horror fan or i mean it's not even horror it's more like i don't know suspense maybe but if you're a King fan, it's really good. And it's cool because the, the, the movie, I almost said film with my pinky in the air. <laughs> the movie is a sequel to the movie The Shining, whereas the book is the sequel to the book The Shining, that's, which are very different things. Yeah. So, But what's super cool without ruining it is the movie Dr. Sleep pays homage to the, the movie or the book The Shining in a couple really uh, subtle and maybe not so subtle ways at points, and it's super cool to see. So, um, as somebody who's bo- read both read the books and seen the movies, it, it's pretty cool. So anyway, all right, video games. Yep. So Stephen, uh, this is gonna be the one episode where we spend a lot of time looking forward. You know, maybe E three as well. We spend a lot of time looking forward. You know, we see a lot of trailers for stuff that's a long way away. But one of the, like, commitments we sort of made is we don't just want to be a show that's about talking about being excited about what's coming in six months. You know, we want to sort of celebrate what's good about gaming right now. This week is not going to be that show. Um, This week is very much about looking forward into 2021. What's coming that's really cool, what we're looking forward to, our sort of wish list for the industry, and then some gaming resolutions. So... Let's work uh, through that. So let's start with sort of a wish list. Um, just a few things we'd like to see in the gaming industry this year. And, and I'll go ahead and kick that off. So I'll start small. Um, for me, it won't be so small, but, you know, scale-wise. I want this to finally be the year that MLB The Show comes to Xbox. And... I know people are rolling their eyes, oh, sports games, uh, 
this is, in my opinion, hands down, the best sports game pretty much year in and year out with a very occasional exception. Mm -hmm. Um, It is so well done from franchise to the road to the show slash, you know, what what EA fans would call, like, be a pro. Um, The... To the Diamond Dynasty slash Ultimate Team mode. It is so well done and well executed in every way. That I, Xbox fans are missing out if you like baseball at all. So I I can't wait to see it. We know it's coming. We just don't know if it's going to be this year or next. And I think, Stephen, it would have for sure been this year. If not for COVID. Yeah. So I think that might hold it up a year, and I really hope that's not the case because that'll make me buy a PS5. And I, I think, well, it could come on PS4. Um, yeah, if it does, I'll probably just stick with the 4, to be honest. I, I so. do think we're going to start seeing some consequences of uh, COVID in the gaming community, like meaning delays and just less stuff coming out. Uh, obviously, last year we did see delays, but I think it's going to be even worse in the next few years as just games just didn't get started. Um, yeah. And I think like, honestly, the more like the, the further we get away from 2020, uh, the more we're going to see of that, like with like, some yeah. years. Where- I remember I said a long time ago on the show by a long time ago, I mean like maybe six months. Sure. That we, we aren't going to see the gaming effects of COVID until this year into next, like 2021 into 22. Because, um, like, all the games that came out last year were already sort of in polishing stages by then. And just wrapping up stuff. Whereas, like, the games that were supposed to come out in 2021-22 were in early to mid-development stage. Yeah. They're going to really feel the the hurt um, of not being able... Or of of not being able to be in the office together and having that just kind of um, turned upside down on them. So yeah. Okay. Uh, so mine would be, and I know this is small bananas here, but mine would be that I hope Mass Effect Legendary Edition comes out at the beginning part of spring 2021 and not the end. So I think like March or April rather than June. Um, but I'm really excited to get my hands on that and play through the the game in in remastered form. Uh, the second game is one of my favorite games of all time. And so I really want to give the first one a, a chance and I didn't actually play the third one. I tried, it just didn't click with me, but that second one was phenomenal. So I'd love to play through and play the DLC and all that fun stuff and have my like choices carry over and consequences and things of that nature. So maybe this will be the time that you finally get into that series, Tyler. But we'll see. I hope so. I really tried with Andromeda, but that was probably not the right one to try with. No. I still say, like, the game wasn't that awful. It was if you picked the the female sh- version of it was Shepard or whoever. She was terrible. Yeah, is it, it was it just because of, like, the, the face animations sh- yeah, and the graphics? Fa- yeah, or? all that. It was bad. Yeah. Like, the, the shooting mechanics I thought were fine. Yeah, I played more of it than I thought I would, but it just, it was really hard with, with mm-hmm. her. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I I know it's the the problem is, and I feel like Bioshock is going to get the same thing soon to an extent where it, it's some of the original games, the, the original trilogy were so good that it's going to be nearly impossible for Bioware to really match what the expectations are going to be. Yeah. And I'm not even saying match the quality of those earlier games because it very well might, but in people's minds those games have become much better than maybe they even were, you know? So it's going to become much harder to, to meet the expectations that people have. So I'm hoping that's um, a possibility or that is something that Bioware will be able to pull off. Yeah. Hopefully. So yeah. Um, speaking of Bioshock, I'm hoping we won't see it this year, but I'm hoping we learn a lot more about it. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, we could see it in the form of a trailer, but we, I don't think we were ever going to get the game in 2021, even pre-COVID. Um, so I think 22 is there still their um, their target date there. But the the other one I really want to throw out here is like it's time to it's time to either move on it or be done with it with Skull and Bones Ubisoft. And I'm hoping that you like are all in on it and it ends up being an awesome game because this game had so much promise when you first showed it off. And I, I'm hoping we see 
more of it, we see that the the play on land is compelling and is good and keeps people interested because that was the problem. It was really fun while you're on a ship. Repetitive, but fun. But once you got on land, there was nothing to do. So all it was was just doing the ship stuff over and over, which is a problem. So I'm hoping they get that figured out and, and are able to come with Skull and Bones and really make it fun and good. Because the game had so much promise when we first saw it. God, what feels like, what, two, three years ago? Yeah. So, yeah. How about you? Uh, so, I'm going to go with a big one and just a general one because um, I don't want to beat a dead horse here. But I want to see the gaming industry actually like put their money where their mouth is with what they said they were going to do, especially in the past like couple of years versus what they've you know done. I want to see them actually like follow through with a lot of it. Uh, it'd just be nice to see and, you know, actually important to do. Um, so we'll see if they do that, but I hope it's, it's not one of those things where you say the right thing and then you kind of just quietly sweep all of it under the rug mm -hmm. and you never follow through with it. So that's what well, and to be, and to be clear, let, let's, I mean, we're talking about things like, um, mandatory overtime. We're talking about the sexual harassment that's taken place in the industry, um, that we've learned of, you know, all those types of things, right? Yeah. Everything. Of that and nature. just be better. Yeah. So, yeah, and, you know, I, the sexual harassment stuff has to go away. Like, that's, there's no place for that. So, let's, before I say what I'm about to say, like, that's a totally separate issue and that needs to go. And anybody who condones that stuff or does it needs to be gone. That's just the way it is. It's not 1982 anymore. So, sorry. But, the, uh, the other stuff, like, there's always going to be a degree of putting in extra time on projects like this and that's not to say it should be the norm though and the problem is that it's become the norm and i think that's what needs to change so i hope that i hope we get more than just you know we we take this very seriously and we're gonna go back and you know listen to our teams and learn from this and blah 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 like we've heard that script how many times now just if you're that concerned about it, if you're that committed to it, we'll start to see some results. And you guys have had plenty of time to come up with new ways and think of new ways. So do it. Yeah. Um, see, but, what I think happens, it's not the matter of just putting in some extra work. What I what I bet happens, and it, it, there was something about Cyberpunk on reddit from a supposed dev and you know take it with a grain of salt but it mentioned that like they would want to do stuff and they would just wait on whoever was in charge to make a decision and then that's why they rush and i remember when i was in the army like half the time we would have stuff to do and or we would just be sitting around doing nothing and then all of a sudden at like three o'clock in the afternoon there were 10 things that needed to get done right away and so now we're there till you know eight o'clock at night doing that crap and i bet that's the case for a lot of these people is they are sitting around and maybe they have some stuff to do but it's not like they're waiting on decisions to be made and then as soon as those decisions to be are made it has to be done right now that's the stuff that needs to go away okay it, it a game that comes out like a couple months later you know but y so you actually have time to implement the decisions that you want is better than you know rushing at the last minute and then just constant crutch and we don't want to get more in that because we've talked our people's ears off but that's the stuff that needs to be fixed that's the stuff that i'd like to see change and i'm worried that some of that's not going to get changed unless the developers actually start like working together with each other to make sure that stuff gets changed yeah. but we'll see but that's the stuff well, I, I yeah changed. i feel like it's it comes down largely to the result between publishers and development companies um as well yeah but apparently so that doesn't I, I think matter if, if you're self-publishing and you're still having these issues true. yep no i agree so yeah i i just i hope that we see some movement on it and not just talk um and that's kind of true for everybody involved so all right for me, um, I, you know, my big one is I feel like in the gaming industry, we have, we've kind of come to this place where negative is news. And when something bad happens, it's news. And that's what we talk about in news segments. And that's what big articles get posted about. But, you know, I, I would love to say that's just the fault of game media outlets, but it's on all of us because... As fans, what we click on the most drives what 
they covered the most. And when we flock to that stuff, and that's where we have the biggest discussions and slap fights in the comment sections and all that stuff, that's what drives, you know, that to be the focus. And so it's on everybody, and these are, and you know, um, outlets have to be better. And I'm talking about the big ones here because they are the most guilty. Um, the biggest, the biggest outlets are the most guilty of either catering to clicks or catering to agendas. And I, I want to see more focus on not not be super positive on gaming, but let's let's um, actually talk about what's happening in gaming and not just what's wrong. You know, if you want the negative and you want people to yell and scream all day, go to YouTube. Because that'll be there forever. So, I would just like to see it be a little more... I, I want... I guess, Stephen, what I'm getting at is I want news outlets to be a way to start discussion rather than just come in and try to shut half the people reading it or listening to it down. Um, and that's true in many arenas of our lives outside of gaming. But, but in gaming, I think... I don't think it's too big of an ask. Yeah. Um, to do that. So anyway, should we talk about Well, I, I have one more. Yeah. No, go for it. Yeah, I would like to it. see Microsoft. Let's you know, we're an Xbox show after all, so let's let's have one Microsoft one specifically. Sure. I'd like to see Microsoft keep up what they were doing, and this is full credit to Tyler, he was the one who brought it up. Microsoft was successful last year when they did their like constant slow news dumps, right? Where it was like they would just give one little piece at a time rather than a, a big three hour show. I think Microsoft should keep doing that. And I think Microsoft needs to continue on making games that are different, that expand their uh, library. I, 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 I feel betrayed in a, in a way, not betrayed. That's a terrible word. I don't want to say that. Um, I feel a little unheard because jrpgs are almost non-existent on the console and it's one of my favorite things i love them and i have to get them from the playstation and nintendo and it's not to say i don't like playing on either mm -hmm. of those i just use the xbox the most because it's what i have all my media stuff on right your netflix hulu disney plus all seven million mm -hmm. subscription services i have and then it's also where i talk to tyler about and play games with him i like using my xbox yeah. the most it's my primary console it would be nice mm -hmm. if i could play a jrpg on the console and play yeah. things like open world rpgs which are my second favorite thing like just role-playing games and yes i have dragon quest 11 finally came which is nice uh came on game pass and i've been playing a little bit of that and then immortals phoenix rising but let's see some first party stuff bring back lost odyssey 2 for, God, for god's sake please microsoft please mm -hmm. but but more i'd like to see them expand their library because even the two shows they did in June and was it June and July or May and July? Um, I swear it felt like there were a thousand new shooters coming to Xbox. Like, come on, you know. And then the big, of course, trip or quadruple A game is a perfect dark game. Like, it's all in the same genre. Yeah. Like, let's you know expand our, our, our horizons here a little bit, Microsoft. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd like to see. Um, but I think they've done a good job starting there. We got Fable and Avowed. I want to see some other things outside of that, maybe especially coming sooner. And buying Bethesda or Zenimax, I think, helps in a lot of ways with at least the open world RPGs. But give me a, mm. give me a couple JRPGs, and uh, I'd be I'd be happy. And I, I I'm I know it's probably because a lot of people that like those games tend to only play on Sony and or Nintendo. Um, for instance, mm. like Xbox's market share and. Japan is really low, yeah. um, so it might not be worth doing, but it does suck for those of us that like Xbox, but also like those types of games. Yeah, so. yeah and Xbox, just don't be afraid to do try new IPs. Yes. Don't be afraid. It's like after, I swear, after like Sunset Overdrive and Quantum Break, they just got like just super shy about doing it. Um. It's unfortunate because uh, neither of those games was bad. No, and Sun Sunset, in fact, was, Sunset was fantastic. Maybe, you know, stop correlating it to the wrong things. Maybe it's because of when you release the game. Yeah, Nothing, you know, releasing yeah. around a Battlefield and Halo Master Chief Collection and, and a Call of Duty all at the same time. Yeah, it might, might add something to do with it. So, so anyway, um, I do have one real quick final one, too, that I just thought of. Um, I hope, first of all, that we're able to travel to things like E3 again this year. Yeah. Um, we'll see how that progresses. And 
you know, I mean, I, I, I don't think we're we're at the, the final act here with this. That's just my opinion. Um, I think we've we're gonna have more developments that change the game a little bit. You know, sure. from what I think we think it is. So, but if we're able to go E three ESA, please make it keep it a gaming event. Please don't make it super focused on influencers. Um, I know that their egos need the boost. <laughs> yeah. But, please. What I loved about going to E3 is that it's just a celebration of gaming. And when you're there, nobody's saying Xbox sucks or PlayStation sucks or whatever sucks, right? Everybody's just having a great time. And you go around the floor and you see people's eyes, like grown adults, and it's like little kids the first time they walk into Disney, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it's amazing, and that, I want it to be that. I want it to be that celebration of gaming. And by the way, when I say grown adults, I don't mean fans necessarily. Like, there were fans there. These are media members that are just in awe of what this is, and, and it's, it's really fun. So keep it about gaming. Keep it about furthering the industry and getting news to the fans let's not make the focus um people who you know think they're stars and say they are so i just i don't want i don't want it to be influencer focus influencers can be a part of it and they can amplify it and they can make it better but it shouldn't be about them that's my only my only thing so let me know if you agree or disagree but while you're typing that email, mailgenerationxbox.com, we're going to tell you about Bet Online. Our friends at betonline.ag, um, you know, guys, college football is heading into bowl season. It's already there. We have a national title game ready to go. Alabama, um, who is what, 11 0, 12 0, Stephen, against Ohio State, sitting at 2 0 or something. <laughs> um, there's some big matchups coming and one big matchup left for the national title, but the NFL playoffs are here this weekend. I'm pulling for those Buffalo Bills. Yeah. Hoping they can uh, they can do it. Yeah. I wouldn't be disappointed if the Chiefs went on a run again because I, I like Pat Mahomes. But, man, it's been so long for Buffalo. It's been a long time for Cleveland, too. But Buffalo's really good. They're Super Bowl good. And I, I'd like to see them at least get there. I just wish they weren't playing the Colts in the first game. Because when, when they yeah. eliminate them, it's going to be... It could be hurt feelings almost, and then I can't root for them. You know? Um, and the Colts aren't a, are, aren't a shabby team, I should say. I know they're the seventh seed. No. But they're not bad. They're pretty good. Um, so we'll see what happens. But No, they're not bad. Um, I guess if I had to like pick that game right now, I'd probably say, like, what, 34 to... Maybe 24? Yeah, well, you could bet on it at betonline.ag. So. I could do that, couldn't I? Um, but uh, there's only one place that has you covered, one place we trust. That's betonline.ag. Sign up today for a free account and use promo code CLNS50 for your 50% welcome bonus. So don't sit on the sidelines any longer. Get in on the action, especially with the NHL, NHL season about to start next week. Um, don't forget to use that promo code CLNS50 to receive a 50% welcome bonus with your very first deposit at Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. Steven, you have a very important message to share. I do, I do. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and and I can't I can't oversell this enough, to be honest with you. Uh, so toilet paper, it, it could go away again. People got really crazy back in March, right? Well, like, what if we run out of vaccines and there's a run on toilet paper again? <laughs> yeah. So you don't want to, to have to worry about that. And you don't have to if you buy a Hello Tushy bidet. Because with Hello Tushy, you don't wipe at all. It's your new hands-free butt buddy. And, and I know, I, I think there's still people out there that think, for some reason, a bidet is, like, gross. That's wrong wrong imagine going into the shower right and you don't turn the water on you just wipe your body with dry paper that's crazy you would think that's crazy but you do that to your butt with dry toilet paper now you know you could wash your butt 
with water from a Hello Tushy bidet. It's fantastic. It attaches directly to your toilet. No electricity or additional plumbing needed. It cleans your butt with a pre precise stream of fresh water, all for the low price of $79. It's a great deal. It literally, it, it's, it's so easy to install. It took about 10 minutes for me and my roommate. Uh, and I've had it for a while. It's amazing. I can't say that enough. It's amazing. I love it. It's it's like changed my life um, in the way that I, I don't ever want to go without one again. Um, it, it, it just, you feel so great when you get off the toilet after, after going number two, right? The holidays, you might have some extra cash. You might be like, what do I want to buy with this? Because I have some extra money. You know, you did get a stimulus. I'm just saying, uh, you might need it for rent. Of course, do that. But you know, you could use some of it to, to upgrade your life with the Hello Tushy bidet. So you can get 10% off right now, plus free shipping at hellotushy.com slash hub. That's hellotushy.com slash hub for 10% off and free shipping. Hellotushy.com slash hub. Every Hello Tushy bidet co uh, attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free happy butt guarantee and a 12-month warranty. Get yours today. All right. So... Steven, uh, before we get out of here, let's talk about some, some resolutions for 2021. These are like gaming resolutions. So, uh, you know, I, I'll start and I'll say that I want to get back. Like, there was a time where I was easily knocking out like 15K gamer score a year. And now that's not the case anymore. I think this past year I got like 4,000, maybe three. Yeah. So I'd like to, I'm not shooting for 15 again. I don't have the time, honestly, to play that many games that much to, to get that type of that type of score. But I would like to do a little better than three to four. So I'm going to shoot for like 7K, 8K this year in gamer score. Yeah, I stopped caring about it when they stopped unlocking on the Xbox One. Like I so attached on the 360 and then on the xbox one remember for a time like some of them just wouldn't unlock and they'd be like so it just stopped making I mean, like it the, fun the whole first year yeah that's what xbox i mean that's why i stopped caring yeah. so i that's a good that's a good one um it means you're actually playing games to completion you know a little bit more um because that's also one of mine is i have so many games on so many different systems pc switch xbox and playstation and i just don't have the time to play them all Instead of buying every single game that comes out, one, that's just wasting money because when I finally do get around to playing it, I could probably get it for cheap, you know, when it's on sale. But two, like, I just don't get to appreciate and, and sit down with the games. And I, I think I made this resolution last year and I, I kind of failed it. But I'm going to do it again this year. I'm going to beat the games that I have, but I'm going to... I've deleted a lot of games off my hard drive. So now I don't have 500 games staring me at the in the face. I only have like 30 games staring me in the face. Um, and I might, I might try to nix that down a little bit more too, but I want to like sit and actually beat the games that I'm, you know, that I buy rather than buy the games and have them just sit in the library haunting me. We all have our backlogs, but mine is just atrocious and I don't beat anything anymore. So I want to beat some games. I yeah. was a little good last year about yeah. beating games and definitely the year before, but I want to be better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Um, you know, kind of the same for me. I, I'm I think I'm better at finishing games than you, but I've I, I my my goal this year is to not allow my hype for a game to peak like months and months and months and months and months before I'm ever gonna play it. Yes. And because what that does is so Cyberpunk's a great example, and they contributed to a lot of their own problems here. But I was really excited for that game at various points. And then I got my hands on it. It's still not bad. Like, on the Series X, it plays okay. There's nothing super bad about it. Um, but it's... I just don't have the... Uh, that excitement. Like, when I'm sitting at work, I'm not like, I can't wait to get home and play Cyberpunk. Yeah. You know, I, I feel that way about NHL much more, which is awesome. I'm glad I got back into that. But, like, Stephen, I've played NHL 21 every day since Thanksgiving weekend. It's already been over a month since every, we started playing that. That's crazy. Yeah. Every day since Thanksgiving weekend. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
you know that and that's awesome because it shows that i'm really having fun with it um i just don't feel that for games like cyberpunk and i think part of it is because i want to eat up every like morsel of information and part of that is our responsibility as you know running a site and trying to get news to all to everybody out there you know that comes and reads i we have to kind of do that a little bit but like i i I'm I'm a little in awe of you sometimes, Stephen, with your your take on like movie trailers. Like when episode nine trailer came out, and you're like, I don't even want to see it. Yeah, and then you try to make me like so we could talk about it on the show. It never like crossed my mind to not watch that thing seventy five times. There's no, yeah, there's no point, and I do, I don't know why <laughs> I do it for movies and not do it for games. Mm-hmm. But then I can but see if I watch it, I can be super excited and then build up these expectations in my head, which will inevitably be crushed. When I actually go see it, you know, um, kind of the same thing with games though. We, we build this hype up, we, we burn ourselves out on the game and we build unrealistic expectations in our head of what it's going to be. See, I actually, so I don't want to do that. I'm with you on that. I'm going to, I'm going to co-opt your, uh, your resolution here as my own. Um, and I think with cyberpunk, I benefited from, I stopped being excited and hyped for this game back in like January. Um, I think when the, the first delay went from the april out and so i stopped following it so when the game finally actually came um and i played it i was i enjoyed it it's just what made me stop wanting to play it was that i did not i like it's all the other things that go with it the baggage that's made me stop enjoying the game and i i do want to go back to it at some point and play it it's just it's there and it has kind of ruined it every time i think about it i'm like ugh. half the people I, I, I hear you on that, and I, I know, and, and you and I are a little different there, um, because I see it as two different things, right? Like, I see it as two different uh, stories and scenarios. Like, all of their baggage, as you as you call it very, very uh, appropriately, I think, um, is their own doing, but it's separate from the quality of the game in at least some ways, but in in some ways here, they're very much tied together. Um, their baggage though is all self-inflicted. Steven, you know what we can say to them for that? What? You have done that yourself. Yeah, we can say that. that. And they have, um, but it doesn't change the fact that for me personally, and I'm not saying for everybody, mm -hmm. but I, I I have to clarify because some people will take it as a, I mean, Mm -hmm. for everyone, you should think like that. I'm not that person for me personally. It's, it has made me stop wanting to play the game because I just, I think about everything when I, when I go to look at the game and it's, it's hard to get away from it. And, um, I can, I can go with that because I can't say I'm like completely immune from that. It leaves a sour taste, yeah, right? And I did enjoy it for and, a, a couple days, and I was having fun, and I just stopped playing it. And it wasn't the Assassin's Creed Valhalla situation where I just didn't like mm-hmm. the game. I actually was having fun. I felt like John Wick, honestly, while playing. Um, yeah, and I and I think like I know people. I've seen people draw conclusions between the cyberpunk backlash and if you remember, like the super early hysteria around Call of Duty Modern Warfare last year. I do. Um, the, there's a big difference though there. One of the games is actually released at the time of the problems, and the other one was months away from it and being judged as if it was released yeah. already. So there's a huge difference between those two things. I think Cyberpunk uh, has a lot of things going for it, and I don't want those to be lost in the shuffle because of some really poor decisions by their leadership. Um, I mean, in in many ways, it's a fantastic game. I know it has its defenders, its its yellow knights, we shall call them, in their uh, in their chairs, defending it till the, till the end of time, or trying to find ways to defend it. Um, although they're becoming less and fewer and fewer soon, they are uh, to their credit. Um, but I think the reality is there's a lot of good things to be said about the game. And where I, where I guess I differentiate is between management decisions and actual developer work and, and the product that works. So in some ways, they're very much connected, but some they're not. All right. Still, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth, so I get it. Yeah. Um, but I, I definitely know what you mean about yeah. 
letting things overhype. Honestly, I didn't really follow the hype for Immortals Phoenix Rising. I didn't really watch any news on it. So when I finally got to play, I was like, this is really fun and have been enjoying it immensely. And I'm going to, honestly, for me, specific one specific game i'm doing this with is hogwarts legacy i'm not gonna i'm going to want to watch every little bit of it because i'm a huge harry potter nerd um it's one of my favorite franchises books movies all of it uh and i don't want it to like overhype so much that i think it's going to be one thing and when it finally gets here it's not that so i'm going to try to limit the amount of yeah. exposure i have for that game besides what we cover on the site um and on the podcast uh but that's what mm. One specific game I'm doing that with because I don't want to ruin that game before it comes. Yeah, even though I know it has spiders uh, and those are going to scare me, and I don't like spiders. Yeah, uh, you'll be okay. Yeah, they're fake spiders. That so. doesn't matter in my head. See, they're they're fake news yeah, spiders. Okay, whatever. They're... Uh, anyways, Tyler, you got, an, oh. you, got a, you got a real <laughs> so, one, a real not okay, non gaming related. I shouldn't say real. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, so I, you know, well, two, I guess. One's sort of kind of gaming related. But one is, like, just personally, I've invested a lot in the last couple of years into just reading more. And um, the more I see people talk um, around the water cooler, so to speak, at work, the more I want to read. Because I see the effects of not doing that. Sure. And uh, especially here in America, where, you know, um, facts are evil at times. Um, but no, I, I like reading. And this past year, I fell a little short of my goal. I read 13 books. My goal is 15. That's still good. That's one a month. Yeah. Over one a month. Yeah. So my goal, again, is 15. I'm going to do it this time. So I want to want to do that. And what killed me was, like, I went through a stretch in the summer and into the early fall where I just didn't read very much. Yeah, oh. I, I was with you. I started reading about January last year, and I got through, like, five books. And I read a lot bigger books than you do, to be honest with you. Um, the books I'm reading are, like, 900 pages apiece. Uh, so if that, in you know, increases mm. my quantity a little bit, I'll take it. Uh what uh hey real quick what kind of um muscle pain cream do you use on your neck to keep that head of yours <laughs> upright uh you're funny you're funny uh i wasn't being a mean person it's just i read like your pinky was no, in the air the entire I'm, time i'm reading the wheel that. of time and if you read the wheel of time it's 900 much page? bigger books because you. you read dr Ooh. sleep it's like 300 pages come on get off get out of here what did i read that was 300 dr pages? sleep no, that one was longer. Okay. Well, the Langoliers, the Langoliers was 300. You've pages. read a few books that are like 400, 500 pages. I like that's not to say it's not anything. Stephen, they don't come with crayons. <laughs> I didn't say that I mean, they did. I'm just saying they're shorter, so it's easy to finish. God. If you know, get out my dick, Squirrely Dan, to, to quote a line from Letter to <laughs> uh, I, I, cause I'm reading, I was reading The Wheel of Time, and they're 900 page books pages it's a long book it takes a minute i mean i also read it this year so you know that's another thousand pages not for you i'm sure you can do a 900 page no i the, i did read I mean, like towards the end i always get on that because i just don't want to stop because you know the end usually is where all the, the fun stuff happens mm -hmm. um i've i've done 250 pages in the in the sitting um a couple times um it's it's long it's like three four hours God, i so wish we had the christian bale oh good for you <laughs> shut up Sound it's right just, I like reading, but I, I want to read more this year. But I, I will say, when I first got my piano keyboard, I, I you know I was really addicted to it for like three weeks, and then I just stopped playing again. But since March, I played. I've played every single day, um, minus a yeah. couple like days here and there. But for the most part, every mm -hmm. single day, even if it's only for like ten minutes, and I want to continue that into the the new year. I very much enjoy playing the piano; it's really fun. Mm -hmm. um, I want to start playing some more video game music. I wasn't good enough to play them well, you, like yeah. well because the the complexity that I want to play them at because it sounds better. Obviously, the more notes you play, mm -hmm. um, but I would like to play some, like one final effort's my dream. I'm gonna learn that. I mm -hmm. have the PDF of it. I'm gonna download it, print it, and then start learning that. It's really it's not super easy, but that's that's a, that's a goal. Well, we're we're happy for you. I mean, you play little baby songs on your piano. I play symphonies. <laughs> Shut, um. Shut up, Tyler. <laughs> 
All right, so uh, the, <laughs> the last one I have is I really want to see our website, this show, um, everything else we do around it kind of take the next step this year. And that's, you know, so I feel like we have a really good, you know, core team in place right now. And, you know, as we continue to build the team and we continue to, you know, get those people who are just super invested in the brand and what we do and, you know, building that kind of complete product um, for all of you out there, you know, we're, we're committed to making that really good. We're committed to making it even better. I mean, we're going to be, what, Stephen, maybe 10 episodes short of episode 300 this year. We're going to hit our fifth anniversary of doing the show. Um, uh, five years of the show being in existence. Um, the, you know, the website's younger. But our goal is to take the next step, and that's building bigger relationships with um, Microsoft and Xbox to be able to have that access. And... Uh, with other developers and publishers too and being able to get you you guys that access and that exclusive content that you can only get here and that's our that's my goal that's my um resolution uh for that for 2021 so that's that all right well i think that i'm gonna leave that there because i I don't want to go after that Uh, but i agree with everything you just said and that's Mm -hmm. a goal for me as well so there you go all right Anything to add? No, no, no. That's uh, okay. going to do it for episode 240. Yeah. Uh, I've been, you know, yeah. hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Uh, if you're going back to work or whatever, hopefully stay safe. We're seeing a lot of more cases yeah. and the bigger, like the, the worst version of it is apparently much more contagious. So try to be as safe yes. as possible. And I know where it's really easy to get complacent. Trust me. I know I was deployed. You know, when I was in the army, it, when you when you get towards the end, it's it's easy to, to stop being as safe as you were at the beginning, and you know that's dangerous. And this is it's not something to take lightly. I know I, I'm not going to soapbox because you heard it a million times. No, we we've heard a million times from everybody. But, um, just make the right decisions for yourself and the people you care about. Yeah, that's thank all you guys though so much for listening. Uh, we yep. want you. We do want all of you to stay safe. Uh, enjoy yep. the games that's our goal you know we talked about it a couple weeks mm-hmm. ago enjoy the games we have and then you know when, when new stuff finally comes we'll uh you know be able to enjoy that and we got a couple new things in the in the we're, we're a couple we're like a week away next week we'll start releases back because that's when we start getting releases mm-hmm. again but there's some good stuff coming early on so you know play the stuff you have yeah. now and then enjoy the stuff as it comes and you know let's make 2021 yeah. a you know, good year before the asteroid hits us in May of 2022, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kidding, but you know. Not really. But yeah, thank you guys so much. This has been episode 240. We'll see ya. Bye. Bye, everybody. Yeah.